It's, it's really hard to actually define these things because um, people with MS will definitely tell you that, it, that it's different. Um, and most patients with other long-term conditions who have inflammatory conditions like RA will also tell you that it's different. But we don't really pick it up on our measures specifically what it is. But I think my understanding is it's that kind of sense that of really overwhelming fatigue where you just have to stop. Um, as opposed to us where we might feel tired but we can keep pushing through it. So that's my understanding. But it isn't actually all that well defined. That's a really complex question. I think it's a number of factors. So I think there's factors which trigger the fatigue in the first place, which are to do with the disease factors of MS. So you get inflammation in MS, and we know that inflammatory processes make people feel fatigued. It's a bit like when you've got flu or cold, you know, you, you, you feel much more tired. It's to do with things like cytokines. It's also to do with things like demyelination, um, in, you know, loss of, loss of nerves, things like that. But the interesting thing is actually that only explains a very small component of the fatigue. It doesn't actually explain all of it. So the work that we've done um, over the years have shown that what happens is that you get these, these biological factors which trigger it and then there are a number of factors which maintain it and make it worse. And those are the ones that we include in treatment. And that might be things like if you always respond to the fat fatigue by maybe having a nap or sleeping so you don't have a very good sleep-wake pattern, that can make it worse. Fatigue also becomes extremely frustrating. It also can make people feel anxious and um, very down because they're now not able to do a whole lot of things. So there can be mood factors that affects people's sleep. So sleep makes fatigue worse. And then there's also a number of thought processes that happen when people get fatigued, like feeling really helpless in the context of fatigue. So all these things interact to kind of maintain and perpetuate the fatigue. So I think we really need to understand fatigue both in terms of biological factors psychological factors and then also social factors, how much stress people are under and things like that. Well, you know, the, the work that we've done so far to date suggests that um, using a kind of combination of physical activity seems to be helpful. So if you kind of can do activity which includes a little bit of aerobic, some strength, some flexibility and so forth. In terms of understanding the mechanism as to why, we, we still need studies like that. We need to understand why exercise does reduce fatigue. And not all exercise is born equal. So it, it, it does seem to be doing sort of combination forms of exercise. We've got some data from very small studies to suggest that balance, actually um, dealing with balance really helps fatigue. But we need, we need better studies on exercise really to understand why it works. Mm -hmm. So again, C CBT tries to break that vicious cycle that I mentioned right at the beginning by helping people identify what are the factors for them. And for each person with MS, they're going to be different factors. So it's quite an individual approach. It's working out with, with the person what, what are these perpetuating factors. And then working collaboratively is how we can move to address and change them. And the place we usually start with is trying to help people get a kind of relatively steady, even routine, have a good sleep-wake routine. Um, not to have boom and bust days, which is very, very common when you've got an illness like MS. You know, on a day that you're feeling well, you know, naturally you want to make the most of it. And so a lot of people go health for leather and then find that they just, the next day there's nothing left in the tank and then it's the kind of, they need to rest up and so forth. So it's trying to get people to kind of perhaps break that cycle, break that pattern. It sounds very glib when I say it like that. These things are actually very difficult to do. But also an important part of the process is we want to look at how, how can we increase be doing what the things that people want to do. So often people have given up things because of fatigue and a very important process is looking at putting those things back in and then also finding ways that we can actually increase and do it more. And so far we've shown that actually we can significantly reduce fatigue with that approach. But what we haven't shown is that we can sustain those effects long term. So we, we need to do a little bit more work as to how we're going to do that. It's very hard at the moment. So there, there, are, there is the FACETS program which people are using, which combines CBT with energy um, effectiveness. So I know a number of centres do use FACETS, so that does include some elements of CBT. It's not quite, quite the same, but um, there is that. At the moment, it's tricky, and that's one of the things that we're working with um, with um, um, the MS Society and the NIHR as to how we're going to try and get a more evidence-based CBT approach that's more accessible to everybody because uh, currently it isn't and it's uh, very important just as the last point that I, I do want to state for people that CBT for fatigue is not the same as CBT for depression and anxiety so improving access to psychological therapies which is available to everybody around the country 
very helpful in terms of dealing with distress, but actually not with symptoms like fatigue and pain, because it's a different protocol. So we, I think it's an important bit of work we all need to do to make sure that that gets out there so it's much more readily available.